will score at Holby City Hospital in a quarter of an hour. And that's after. BBC One brings you this week's National Lottery draw, just a little late, but live from Earl's Court in London. to be living so close to the venue this evening. And as you can see, and you've probably heard, we've arranged one of the biggest crowds we've ever had to watch the National Lottery live this evening, which comes to you from the Earl's Court Exhibition Centre in London. And I bet you that the organisers of the Ideal Home Exhibition are really pleased they've arranged to be here at the same time. Now, you probably haven't noticed, but for the first Saturday in 19 weeks, there's a small gap to my left-hand side, you see? And that's normally filled by my charming assistant, Miss Anthea Turner. Now, she sends her apologies, but she's had to stay at home to supervise the construction of the new West Wing of her wardrobe. <laughs> now, uh, wardrobes aside, after last week's draw, two winners joined the National Lottery's Millionaires Club, and they can now afford anything at this exhibition. In fact, they can probably afford this exhibition, as they each picked up nearly four million pounds. Now, one of those... Exactly. A big woo for that. Thank you. Now, one of those lucky winners was Audrey Jenkins from Hartlepool. And with her partner Andy, their children Claire and Carl. I'm delighted to welcome them here tonight, along with a person who's going to present the cheque. Television presenter, chats are host, radio DJ. Please welcome Gloria Honeyford. I'll ever get to four million pounds. I'm going to kiss it for luck, but of course, Audrey's a lady who has won it. Many congratulations, Audrey. Absolutely stunning. Now, has it actually registered yet? Did you have this vast amount of money? No, it's just like a dream. Just can't believe it. Because you've been in London all week, haven't you, Andy? Oh, yes, we've enjoyed ourselves. But how do you ever begin to fully understand that you've got four million pounds, 300,000 pounds interest a year? Well, it hasn't sunk in yet, I don't think. It's still it's like a dream. And last week, it took you, what, half an hour half or an did hour, you realise yeah. you'd won it? Yeah. Why was that? Because I realised I had five numbers and I was really excited at five. And then when I knew I had six, I just couldn't believe it. So have you had any of the money actually advanced to you this week? Yeah. We went to the bank and he counted out a £1,000 in front of us. And we just couldn't believe that. Well, you've got a lot more thousand pounds to come. As, as uh, In fact, we were just saying you could buy the whole exhibition. So many congratulations. Well done. And I'm sure everybody would like to wish you well. Four million pounds. <laughs> Do you want to hold it? <laughs> Actually, the children said that they had to hold the four million. Now, also last week, 25 winners managed to match five numbers plus the bonus ball, including one syndicate of five market traders led by their organiser, Denise Allen. Now, they all run stalls at Kilburn Market, and with their takings boosted to £98,000 between them, they had plenty to shout about. Well, then. We all worked down in Kilburn Market. There are five of us in the syndicate. You know, we got various stalls, uh, New Age Cafe, fashion, etc. When I was checking my ticket at home, we only had four numbers came up. And then Denise phoned up and said, we've got five on the bonus ball. And I said, take it easy. Just read the numbers out to me. I thought she was ringing to say, well done, you know, we've got four up. She said, no, we've got five and the bonus number. Because I put down a wrong number in the winning line, and um, instead of sharing 57 pounds, we're actually sharing 98,000. So it's the best mistake I've ever made. Well, we've all got different ideas of what we're going to spend the money on, but one thing we'd really love to do, all of us, is to go in a hot air balloon. Before I came up here, I suffered terribly with vertigo, you know, but now I'm ready for skydiving. <laughs> Views are amazing. Well, here's a very unorthodox check in a basket. It's the most magnificent sum, £98,160. Thank you very well much. Well done. Indeed. It's Thank all you. yours. Thank you. 
you keep on ballooning and I'll keep on accepting these chairs. Good girl. <laughs> Come back and see me anytime you like. <laughs> Okay, on to tonight's draw. Now, Guinevere and Set of Balls number two have been randomly selected under the eye of our independent adjudicator. Now, while I ask our draw master, John Willen, to load those 49 balls into the machine, we thought it'd be important to stress again the security that surrounds all the draw equipment. Now, Arthur and Guinevere arrive at the location of each draw in high security crates. An independent adjudicator inspects the seals on the crates before both machines are unloaded. Now, it's up to a member of the public to randomly decide which of the two is used. So, John Willen offers a choice of envelopes to a member of the public, and the adjudicator reveals the names of this week's machine. Two sets of balls are always carried, and again, to determine which one is used, another passerby is invited to select an envelope. So, there you are. If you wondered how it's done, well, that is how it's done. Now, over the past few weeks, many of you have won prizes by using one of Sam Warren's methods for number selection. And of course, millions of you haven't. But for those of you who said you wouldn't get out of bed to use any of his systems, he's devised a special scheme for selecting your numbers in your sleep. Dreams have fascinated scientists for hundreds of years. And the idea that they're responsible for deja vu experiences has been gaining ground. There's even lots of cases of people dreaming the winning lottery numbers. One thing's for certain, dreams have special significance for the person who's actually having the dream. But you want to know how to interpret your dreams into numbers. You need to write down your dreams and find out which numbers recur through each of the dreams. For example, on different nights, you may dream of an absent lover, traveling on a plane, or talking to a close friend. Now these are the number sequences associated with each of those dreams. The number 18 is consistent through all three of these dreams. So make sure you play it on the lottery. If you'd like a full list of dreams and their number sequences, send a large stamped addressed envelope to this address. Lottery Live Dream Numbers, PO Box 200, Harrogate, HG1, 4XB. Yes, I think Sam Warren needs to get his dreams analysed, actually. Now, Gloria, you've got a very important piece of I paper have. there, this haven't you? This is so exciting because straight from the headquarters of the National Lottery, right. the estimated prize fund is £28 million. Pounds. <laughs> And that means that tonight's estimated total jackpot prize is £8.3 million. Pounds. Fantastic. Now, since the lottery started, for every £1 ticket you've bought, around 28p has gone to good causes. And yesterday, as you may have seen in the news, the Welsh Arts Council, who were the first Arts Council off their marks, announced their initial funding grants, where nine organisations are to share over two and a quarter million pounds. But even quicker out of their blocks were the Sports Council, who started to distribute lottery funds on Monday. And the Scottish Sports Council announced that they had a handout worth £1.8 million pounds. So, Olympic athlete and broadcaster Sally Gunnell, spurred on by the whiff of good cause cash, dashed up to Glasgow to find out more. Seven sporting projects have been selected by the Scottish Sports Council to benefit from the 1.8 million giveaway. They're all very much community schemes and they'll be given grants ranging from 37,000 up to 760,000 pounds. And one of the projects to benefit is the YMCA here in Bells Hill. Well, we're going to improve the facilities actually where we are right now. We're going to be building a multi-gym, 22 pieces of apparatus such as exercise bikes, uh, rowing machines, joggers. Our new facilities, we hope, will encourage parents to come into the YMCA, thus developing a family centre, something that would be fairly unique in this day and age. If the facilities were here and the children were here, I would certainly use the facilities. I think it would be a very great asset. So we want to develop a family centre where mums and dads can work out while the children are safely engaged in one of our many youth activities. Well, here we are down the road at Tollcross, and we're at the site of the East End Leisure Centre, where they've just been awarded £280,000. And here to tell us a bit more is Bernard Connolly from the Council. So what's going to be happening here? Uh, as you said, Sally, this will be the East End Leisure Centre. Over here will be a full-sized international sports hall, hell suite, dance studio, cafeteria, restaurant and over here will be the big 50 meter pool. The lottery money Sally will be spent in this area here to provide a, a floating floor. Uh, this is an international pool which on average is seven foot deep. 
which means that uh, the general community can swim and, if you like, splash about and play. This will provide a floor that comes straight up to flush with the top of the pool, mm -hmm. which means people with a disability, young children, etc., can actually get straight access to the pool and have no fear for their safety or anything like that. In fact, it will provide a very large water playground for the community in this area of Glasgow. So it's going to be the only one in Glasgow? Be the only one in Great Britain. Yeah, you've got to be proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, joining me live at Earl's Court is one of the fastest reporters over 400 metres I've ever seen, Sally Gunnell, and the Vice Chairman of the Sports Council, former West Ham and England international, Trevor Brooking. <clears throat> now, Trevor, tell me, uh, you were handing out the cash for money. How much did you hand out as well? Uh, this week, uh, we gave away 3.2 million to about 34 schemes uh, spread across the country, ranging the grants from 2,500 to a little cricket club in uh, Moberley and Cheshire, Fantastic. and then three quarters of a million a school scheme in Sutton Coalfield. OK, and, and how often are you hoping to, 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 to put well, out from, cash? From April onwards, we're looking at about 10 million a month, and we're hoping in excess of 125 million in the first year. Oh, well, that's fantastic news. Thanks very much for that. And I believe, Sally, you've got a favour to ask yeah, Trevor. Yeah, well, we'd like to put your ball control to good use, not with your feet, but with your fingers. And this is a lottery order of the crossed fingers. And I got the balls rolling trophy. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Trevor Brookie and Sally Gunnell. Now, whilst Trevor warms up that uh, draw-starting finger, it's time to enter the strange and strange world of Mystic Meg. Well, she was right again. Remember last week she saw a lady wearing black and red with a cat nearby? Well, one of the balloonists that you saw in the film earlier was wearing black and red, and she's got two cats. So, will she be right this week? Mars, the planet of victory, brings special luck for Leo and Aries and friends who play football together. And a rune casting for this day shows that someone whose name starts with the letters R and A is going to be the big winner. This person works for a travel company and is a keen musician. There is also success for people born in the Jupiter return years of 1936 and 1960. Hmm, I always believe her predictions were when she's got the very big collars on. Anyway, now let's get to the reason we're all gathered here this evening. It's draw time. <laughs> well, uh, Lowdrop was quoted the other day saying,